welcome i welcome you all to this course samasa in paninian grammar 1 my name is malhar kulkarni i am a teacher a faculty at the department of humanities and social sciences iit bombay and i have been learning and teaching paninian grammar for more than past 20 years and will be sharing the insights that i have gained in this process about paninian grammar in this course with the focus of samasa we begin with the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat charikarti bari bharti sanjari harti leelaya vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat charikarti bari bharti sanjari harti leelaya in this first lecture we will take a look at the overall contents of this particular course the title of the course is samasa in paninian grammar and one so the next obvious question is what is a samasa and we shall deal with this question in a brief manner over here what is a samasa the brief answer is a compound a compound is called samasa what is the characteristics of a compound the main characteristics of the compound is that it is made up of more than two elements two elements such that each one of them has generally an independent distribution i repeat compound is made up of two elements or sometimes even more than two elements two elements such that each one of them has generally an independent distribution and here are the examples radne purusho gachhati this is a sentence radne purusho gachhati and we notice that there are three words over here this is a sentence having three words ek vakya with three padas and then the same meaning can be also stated by bringing together radnyah and purushah and then we will get raja purusho gachhati so raja purusha is a compound radnya purusho gachhati is a sentence and two elements in this sentence namely radnya and purusha they come together and they have independent distribution and then they are joined together of course this joining brings about certain changes in the process and this process is very complex at the same time extremely deep and very very interesting and insightful and it is this process that we shall focus on in this particular course so raja purusho gachhati is an example where we have used a compound so radnya purusho gachhati in this particular sentence there is no samasa where each word is appearing independent of each other radnya space purusho space and gachhati full stop so three words are there they are separated from each other by spaces 
And if you look at Raja Purusha Gachati, you will notice that here there is a Samasa. Raja Purusha is the Samasa. There are two words which are appearing together as one unit. And then in the sentence, there are two words which are separated from each other by a space. Raja Purusha, space, Gachati, full stop. So we observe the difference in the first sentence, Rajna Purusha Gachati, there are three words. In Raja Purusha Gachati, there are two words. Two elements in the sentence, they got together, they underwent the process of compounding and a compound output was generated in the form of Raja Purusha. So Raja Purusha is an example of Samasa and the process that played an important role to generate Raja Purusha from Radnya Purusha is what is known as Samasa. Generally, we call Raja Purusha as a Samasa. In fact, it's an example of a Samasa and there is quite a lot of theoretical implication and also the practical derivation process involved in getting Raja Purusha as an output from Radnya Purusha Gachati, which we shall deal with in this particular course. So this is what is a Samasa. We also see that Samasa is profusely used in the languages. Since we are dealing with Paninian grammar, which is the grammar of Sanskrit, we may throw a brief glance of the Sanskrit language and the importance of Samasa in Sanskrit. So if we go back to the Vedic language, which is considered to be the historical stage of the classical Sanskrit language, we notice that there are several compounds that are used in the Vedic language. In fact, in the Vedas, there is also a tendency to explain these compounds. So we have compounds like Indragni or Mitra Varunau. Similarly, Pathirakshi or Devagana or Swayambhu, etc. If we look at the classical language, we also have compounds like Vagartha. And then one trend which uh, is very famous about Samasa in classical language is that the constituents of the compounds, their number keeps on increasing. And some works in the classical era are famous for such profuse use of samasas in those works. So here are some examples. Vagartha, a very small sized compound. And then if you notice, now the size of the compound increases. Then we have Pratyutpannamati. Then there is further increase in the size where we have the compound Parapratyaya Neya Buddhi. Then we have Jaya Pratigrahita Gandha Malya. So Vagartha has got two constituents. Pratyutpannamati can be said to have four. Parapratyaya Neya Buddhi can be also said to have five. Jaya Pratigrahita Gandha Malya can also be said to have five. Now, this is a peculiar feature of the classical Sanskrit language. It is also true that the samasas are profusely used in modern Indian languages also. For example, we keep on regularly listening to all these words. Loka Sabha. Gana Rajya, Bahujana Hita, Sarva Shiksha, Loka Satta, Bharata Ratna, and also Vishwa Shanti, Akasha Vani, Karuna Nidhi, Hari Mandira, Vidyalaya, 
antyodaya there are multiple examples that are found in modern indian languages of such samasas and many more samasas all these examples given on this slide they are primarily the words from sanskrit but there are words from those native modern indian languages which also undergo this process of compounding we also see that this phenomena is also present in several languages across the globe and here we are taking only two languages as examples but there are many languages in which this particular process is found and it is also widely studied for example in english you have these three types of compounds where you have the hyphenated compounds like chicken or son in law or runner up then there are basketball greenhouse headache earthquake and grandmother this type of compound where there is only one unit and then we have prime minister two words separated but acting as one unit high school middle class post office these are some examples from english german is also very famous for the use of compound in fact there is a famous statement by a british author mark twain who said that german compounds are sometimes so long that they seem to have a perspective and here are some examples from german sonnenblum welt anschauung morgenland zeitschrift mit tag mit woch flughafen hauptbahnhof zusammensetzung autofahrer and this is an example of the very long compound kraft fahrzeug hauptflicht versicherung so the point is that the phenomena of samasa is prevalent in many languages modern languages as well as classical sanskrit language and also the vedic language in addition we also see that there are these multi word expressions which are also part of the modern vocabulary they are part of modern languages for example in english we have kick the bucket let the cat out of the bag or sweep under the rug also we have examples like look up or break up or in short as well as by and large similarly telephone box and car park and finally the named entities like san francisco as well as indian institute of technology now on the right hand side of this particular slide we have examples of what is known as complex predicate these are the complex words or the compound words in hindi as well as marathi so le lena de dena gir padna kaam karna dimag khana these are the examples from hindi similarly deun takne sahan karne vaat lagne parat jane these are some examples from marathi these are very common in these modern indian languages and this is a very important task as far as the natural language processing is concerned how to deal with multi word expressions now why all this is mentioned here is to highlight the fact that the study of the process of compounding is extremely important and would prove insightful in order to deal with these phenomena also available in the modern indian languages and also in order to prepare the tools in the area of natural language processing the important questions that need to be asked in relation with this particular phenomenon is 
how do these words get formed? Is it a haphazard random process or is there some system? Is there a rule based system that can explain these phenomena? So what is the base? Is the meaning a base? Can there be some pattern that can be explained? How do speakers of the respective language comprehend such samasas? Also, do the speakers of the respective languages create new such words? Is this process productive? To put the same question in the other words, is this process productive enough? And then how do these phenomena get treated in natural language processing? And the most important question in this regard with reference to this particular course would be what has Paninian grammar got to offer in this particular regard? This is a very crucial question. We know that the process of compounding is there in different languages. What has Paninian grammar got to offer in this regard? First of all, in order to comprehend the process and then in order to develop some tool in order to process these types of words. The possible answer to this final question is that the Paninian grammar can definitely offer some theoretical explanation. For example, with reference to the structure of the components as well as the compositionality, that is how the constituents are stitched together in order to bring about a compound output. Then classification of such expressions, how do we classify them? Interrelation of such words with other words in the sentence, how does a compound work or behave in the sentence? What is the parts of speech of compounds, etc. And irregularities in the form and also the meaning of such expressions. Paninian grammar can certainly provide the theoretical explanation in all these areas. Also, the philosophical explanation can be provided by the study of Paninian grammar, which says that samasa is one undivided word denoting one undivided meaning. The fact that you find constituents in it and the fact that you also construct a derivation system to get the output in the form of a compound from certain elements is all right as an exercise, but philosophically, ultimately, it is only one undivided word denoting one undivided meaning. That has got quite a lot of significance as far as the explanation of this particular phenomenon is concerned. Also, formal treatment, that is form related treatment, which is given in the Paninian grammar of this particular phenomenon can provide quite a lot of insights into the tools that can be developed. And also in the understanding that we can have of the samasas and probably the productivity and the capacity to produce new compounds in modern Indian languages. The generativeness of this particular process can be better understood with insights by the study of Paninian grammar. So what shall we do in the course? We'll try to address some of these questions and also we'll try to get some more insights from Paninian grammar. So we'll be dealing with these topics. What is the theory of compounding? What does compounding entail? From what is a compound form derived? And then what happens when you break a compound? And also, how do you break a compound in the first place? How do you break a compound and in what form? And what is this break called 
Is there a technical term that is used for it? Similarly, how is the meaning of components or constituents compounded? Is the meaning the base for the formal compounding? What could be called the exclusive meaning of the compound? Is the compound meaning always preceded by the sentence meaning? And is the compound always preceded by the sentence? Then we move ahead and look at the concept of compositionality. Is compound, is compounded meaning different than the meaning of the constituents? And similarly, is the compound form different than the form of the constituents? How many constituents can a compound have? Is there a cap on certain number? Only this much and not many more. Is there a lower cap as well as a higher cap? Are the constituents compounded in a structured manner? And should these constituents be shown to be separate by using a hyphen? What are the types of compound in Sanskrit? The questions that we asked earlier, they were of general nature. Now, these are the questions that are very specific to Sanskrit. What are the types of compound in Sanskrit? And what are the features of a compound? How is a compound different than non-compounded elements? So, how is Raja Purusha different than Radnya Purusha Gachati? What is the relation of a compound and also the Taddhita formation, which is a very productive formation in Sanskrit? What is the correlation of a compound with the lexicon? What is the correlation of a krit pratyaya and compound and samasa? Coming back to the word samasa, the questions that can be addressed and are addressed in this course are what is the meaning of the word samasa? What does it signify? And what is the technical word for dissolution of the samasa? What is the meaning of the word samasa in other fields? Because we know that the word samasa is used in several other branches of learning as well, even in philosophy. We also notice that that samasa na me shuruno. These kinds of usages are prevalent in Sanskrit. What, do, what does the word samasa mean over there? What is the correlation between samasa and sangraha? When does the derivation of a compound begin? And when does it end? What it means is, what is the output of the process of samasa? Similarly, what is a laukika vigraha and what is a laukika vigraha? Can there be a compound of two tingantas? So what is the basic condition for a compound to take place? What is visa? Remember, this is visa and not visa. What is visa? Similarly, how are the compounds explained in the Vedic language? Coming to the specifics of the treatment of samasa in Paninian grammar, we will also highlight how it is treated in Ashtadhyayi, the grammar of Panini. So there are vidhi rules of samasa stated in 2.1 the samasanta pratyaya, the suffixes that are added at the end of a compound, they are stated in 5.4. The a look is stated in 6.3.
the purva padadesha is stated in 6.3 ekashesha is stated in 1.2 samasa swara is stated in 6.2 shatva in the samasa is stated in 8.3 anatva in the samasa is stated in 8.4 linga and vachana in the samasa is stated in 2.4 also a samartha samasa and the concept of gamaka are explained in the mahabhashya on 2.1 and then krut pratyaya and samasa this is stated in 3.2 in the ashtadhyayi so these are the overall contents of this particular course we shall be dealing with these questions we shall be trying to answer them and we shall be also dealing with these topics in the ashtadhyayi we will be using some kind of terminology which we shall also explain notation used in this course for a samasa that will be explained notation used for showing the dissolution of the samasa will also be explained and also the meaning of the plus sign will be explained these are the texts that will be referred to in this particular course constantly ashtadhyayi the grammar of panini which was composed around 500 bce approximately this is the source of the treatment of samasa in paninian grammar we will be referring to a chapter in the vyakarana mahabhashya constantly while we explain the overall theory of compounding because in this particular adhika which is devoted entirely to this process of compounding there are various aspects that are presented and they are studied thread bare with the pros and cons presented and argued and quite a lot of commentaries also explain this anhika quite elaborately we also have modern commentaries written on this particular chapter notable amongst them is the edition and translation with exegetical notes by professor shivram dattatrey joshi which is published from the university of pune erstwhile and that is a very important reference work that we shall be referring to also we will be referring to the text of vakyapadiya composed by a great scholar called bhartrhari around 5th century ce vyakaran mahabhashya was composed around 2nd century bce then we shall be referring to the text of the kashika vritti which is the oldest available complete commentary on the ashtadhyayi a word to word commentary and this particular important commentary comments on each and every word of the ashtadhyayi and each and every aspect of the samasa treated in the ashtadhyayi together with plenty of examples and explanation so we shall be referring to this particular text quite regularly more importantly we also have a collection of manuscripts of this particular important text of the kashika vritti which we shall also take help of we have collected more than 200 manuscripts of this particular text from all over the world thanks to professor ivin karsh and the university of cambridge then we shall be referring to the samasa prakarana from the vyakarana siddhanta kaumudi composed by the great battoji dikshit the period for the construction of the kashika vritti is considered to be 
around 7th century CE and Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi around 17th century CE. Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi is the text that is currently prevalent for the study of the Vyakaran Shastra in the universities and also traditional curriculum. We will utilize the insights presented in the Samasa Prakarana by the great Bhattoji Dikshita who also authored the Mangala Charana that we recited right at the beginning of this particular lecture and we shall adopt a practice of reciting this particular Mangala Charana at the beginning of every subsequent lecture in this particular course. So these are the texts that we shall be constantly referring to <coughs> and will be explaining the process of compounding or Samasa in Paninian grammar in this particular course. Since this is the first course, the topics that will be covered will be focused only on the Tatpurusha compound about which we shall say more in the coming lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. Adya etavata alam namas sabhayai.